Hi, in this video I'm going to teach you how to set up Robot Studio, which is a simulation environment for ABB robots. Uh, we will learn how to download it, install it, then how to create a robot cell, um, the basic controls for a robot cell, and loading a program and executing that program in the simulation environment. Uh, so let's get started with this. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to Google, you're going to Google Robot Studio, and you're going to go to the main website of the developers. Okay, in this website you will find the downloads section, and in this section you have to download Robot Studio with Robotware, whichever the latest version is at the moment you're watching this. So probably right now is 6.7, maybe it's a bit farther up when you download it, but it's fine. So what you're going to do is you're going to download this zip file, which I already did. It's going to take some time and then you're going to go through the installation process. What you're going to be installing is a 30 day trial. Uh, it's a limited trial, but don't worry about this because for basic simulation purposes, which is what we're going to be doing here, it's fine even if the expire, if the, even if the trial expires. Okay. So once you download and install this, you will have something similar and you open it, you will have something similar to this. This is the main entry point of Robot Studio. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a very simple robot cell where we're just going to have one small robot at the 00, zero coordinate system. Uh, what we will do is we are going to go here to solution with station and robot controller. You will want to choose somewhere on your system to store this station so that you can reuse it all the time, right? I'm going to go for the default folder and then here you will want to choose from the drop down. Maybe you want to give it a list, uh, a name. So I'm going to go for, for example, IRB 140, right? And here from the robot model list, you will want to choose whichever model of ABB robot you want to simulate with. This will depend on whatever you want. Or you want to do or whichever model you physically have and you can use so I'm gonna go for for example the IRB 140 it's a small robot it's very popular or you can choose the 120 as well and in case you wanted to customize special features that the robot may have you may want to choose click here this is not necessary I'm just gonna do it for the sake of of showing it right it will take some time and then <clears throat> the options menu will pop up in which you can add whatever options you want this robot to come with. Options are like, you can think about them as additional features that the robot can have. So for example, um, it's very common that you will want to have the Ethernet IP adapter because this is what you use to stream programs to the robot, right? Or, for example, uh, I don't know, you may want to have multi-move, you may want to have um, externally guided motion. This is really cool. Multitasking allows you to run several programs at the same time. It's up to you. Okay? So, once you hit OK, um, then Robot Studio will do its magic to create a robot cell. And a six-axis robotic arm will show up on the main window. Let's wait a little bit for this to happen. I'm given the option to choose between two different models of 140. I'm going to go for the basic. And then the robot just shows up and I have it ready on my screen. So I can, on my screen, I can zoom in and out and I can pan around with a rather strange combination of keys and mouse. So for example, I am using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I'm using control left click to pan and I'm using mouse wheel and right click to rotate around. I find it a bit weird, but it takes some time to get used to. Okay. Um, so we have a basic robot and the robot is now simulating a physical robot, which is turn off. Right now, this robot is not doing anything. We need to turn it on. In order to turn it on, there's a couple of things we would need to do. So we can go here to the controller and then we can click on the control panel to make sure that we have this control panel options just as we would have in the real physical robot. 
and which we can use to turn the robot from automatic mode into manual mode to turn the motors on or to actually shut it down. So right now we can see that the robot is on, is working, but it's not doing anything. Something else that we can pop up is the flex pendant. The flex pendant gives us a virtual simulation of the flex pendant. Uh, which we can use to track down what's happening in the robot or to load programs, etc. Okay. Other things we can do here is we can manually adjust the position of the robot. In order to do that, we can go to modeling, we can go to layout, and we can right click here on the robot and say mechanism join jog or linear jog, whatever is up to you. If we do join jog, then we have the rotations of each one of the joints of the robot and then I can nudge for example the fifth axis to get to a more home position right or I can just drag these guys around and then move the robot right if at some point this gets weird I can always go back to the robot right click on it and say jump home and jump home will move it automatically to a rotation of 0, 0, 0, 30 degrees for the fifth axis and 0. I happen to like 90 degrees better because it's parallel to the, to the horizontal plane and it's much more convenient. Uh, please notice the difference. This robot is centered here at 0, 0, 0 coordinates. The global coordinate system is this one. So X is pointing this way, Y is pointing this way, and Z is pointing up. But the coordinate system, and this will be extremely important very soon, the coordinate system of the TCP, the tool center point of this robot, is here. And we can see that it's somehow inverted. It is as if the world coordinate system had rotated 180 degrees over the y-axis so the y-axis is the same but the z-axis is pointing down and the x-axis is pointing inwards so these two axes are flipped okay this will be super important to keep in mind whenever we do <coughs> operations that involve the orientation of the tcp the tool center point okay Okay, so now that we have a robot cell working, um, um, I'm going to, and remember that we have the flex pendant somewhere here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a program into this controller and I'm going to execute it to simulate if the robot uh, can correctly execute this program and if any of the targets is out of reach or if I hit some singularity or in general, to make sure that whichever program I have generated is going to run fine and is going to run safely in this robot, okay? So there's two ways I can do this. I can do this directly from Robot Studio, which is a bit faster, or I can do it from the Flex Pendant, which is more similar to how I would do it in a physical robot, okay? So I'm just gonna go over both of them. Uh, so if I'm here, if I wanna do it directly from, Rapid, from Robot Studio, you can see that there's a tab called Rapid, which manages everything that involves programming for ADD robots. Rapid is the name of the language that is the programming language that runs on ADD robots. Okay, so <coughs> something that I can do is I can go here, I can expand my Rapid menu, and I can see that by default, this robot that I created from scratch comes with a module a default module and if I double click on it I see the rapid code that is running inside of this robot right now which basically has nothing it's an empty program right all of these are comments and this is just nothing and you can see that because if I hit run to execute that empty program it just runs but nothing happens and it stops okay so not very exciting so what I can do is I can load a full program into this robot by going to here, right clicking, and then right clicking on the T rope task, right clicking here and say load a program. 
it says that it's going to be over or it's going to override whichever program it has blah 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 and but that is fine okay so if i hit okay i'm going to go to my desktop and i can i can load this program uh oh one quick detail uh the program the sample program that i'm going to be providing you with this video is in prg format it's in an older format so you have to go to the drop down and select prg format and then here you can see that i can load my program called 03 simple program vertical square if i double click on this everything has correctly uploaded and i can see that in my event log you can see that my program is now called blah 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 and the main module is called square tracer which is what i just done uh, I, I just loaded and here you can see that now inside of the rapid code i have some actual rapid code okay so let's see if this actually works uh i'm going to hit start and if i do so and i close my rapid program i can see that the robot now starts moving so the robot is replicating what would happen in real life this program that i just loaded is a very simple program that takes the robot from the home position it moves it somewhere here and then it draws a vertical square I can see that it's going to do the exact same operation again and that's because by default run mode in new robots that I create are is cyclical so I can deactivate that by setting single cycle instead of continuous right so if I set single cycle now the robot is going to <clears throat> finish executing this one program which moves the robot to this position it rotates the TCP to make it frontal to the user draws a square waits a second and then goes back to home position okay and it stops we can see that the robot has stopped executing right so sounds like everything works uh if we wanted to do this from the flex pendant as if we were in the real physical robot it would be very simple to do as well you would only have to take that prg file the file that contains the rapid code just put it on a thumb drive, stick the thumb drive into the robot controller, and then from the flex pendant, just hit load program, and then yes, I'm going to override the program that is currently right now, and then find, for first go and select PRG, PRG program, and then try to find where that program is in your system. Um, actually, I don't really know where I am right now, but if you were on the physical robot you would be somewhere here on your you would you would see the thumb drive somewhere so i think i need to go uh where do i need to go okay i'm gonna pause here until i find this just one second okay so i it was on my desktop so i just moved it to my c hard drive and then you can see that if I go here, I can find the program called 03 Simple Program Vertical Square, the same I used before. I can load it, and then everything gets loaded, and then I can press the Run button for my Flex Pendant, and then the robot is going to execute that program. You can see also that I can see these two icons, which are telling me where the program execution and the motion execution are at any point. And the program is done yep, we will successfully run this program okay but you might be wondering so what is this program that you just loaded how do you create these programs or how can you tell the robot what to do well um, that's obviously much uh, that's obviously part of a much larger discussion which is how to program robots in general uh, which uh, take us forever to cover obviously uh, but sufficient to say that at a very high level, what we just did was we took a rapid program, which is, again, rapid is the native language that runs on ADB robots. We took a program that was generated somewhere else and we loaded here in Robot Studio and we ran it. You can see that program by just double clicking here and seeing that it's a very simple text file. Uh, and it's actually a text file to a point where we can go here, for example, to the program that we loaded. And if I double click on it, maybe on your system, you, your computer doesn't know how to open it. 
but I have programmed it, I have programmed Atom to be able to recognize PRG programs. Atom, Atom is a simple text editor that you can download from for free from internet, but it's very good for, for example, for coding uh, because it does syntax highlighting. So one of the things that I can do is I have downloaded a special module in Atom that allows me to highlight rapid code and make it much more readable and much more understandable. <clears throat> so at a very high level, what this program does is it has a main module called Square Tracer, and the main module defines some variables, in this case, the velocity at which the robot moves, and defines a main procedure, which is basically the main program that the robot executes once it starts running. Uh, you can see that the main program is basically just a set of instructions, one after the other in sequence. So programming robots in general is very simple. You just have to tell them what to do in sequence, one after the other. Uh, it, it depends how to tell them what to do. It's a bit trickier sometimes, but in general, uh, uh, that's very much how it's done. And you can see here from the highlighting that this that is grayed out are comments. I did generate this program with a tool that I developed called Machina, which allows me to introduce comments that uh, help me understand what I wrote or what instructions I wanted to tell the robot to do. So you can see that these three comments mean that when I set the speed the, and the position of the robot, those actually have no real meaning when it comes to robot uh, instructions. They're embedded here in the velocity and the precision the zone part of an instruction. Uh, but Machina keeps them in memory, so you, uh, we can talk about that later. So, but you can see that that motion that we did with the robot, when we, from starting from home, we went to coordinates 300, 300 something, and then we it rotates, it waited for one second, it moved 50, 75, 75 and 75, it waited for another second and it went back home with a smooth joint movement. That is pretty much what's happening here. We move to coordinates 400, 200 and 500 and I know that because I can also read it from the comment here. Uh, we stayed at the same coordinates but we changed orientation. But in the comment I can see that this is what's making me rotate minus 90 degrees around the Y axis. Then the robot waits for one second, and then I move in a square motion. So I move 75 units y direction, 75 units in the z direction, minus 75 in the y direction, and minus 75 in the z direction. The robot waits another second, and then the robot moves all the joints to rotation 0, 0, 0, 90, 0, which is that orientation that I explained feels like a home position for a six-axis robotic arm. How to generate this nightmare of numbers and or quaternions and external axes? Um, you can do it from scratch. This is a text file, so you can add here whatever text you want. But it's obviously not very intuitive to do, and there's many tools out there that help you do this in a much more intuitive way. So in future videos, I will explain techniques to generate rapid code with external tools such as, for example, the one that I developed called Machina. So stay tuned for that.